We got some pretty darn earth-shattering news in the National Football League on Tuesday after uh, Tom Brady announced his retirement that morning. So, Brian Flores, the now former head coach of the Miami Dolphins, filed a lawsuit against the National Football League as well as his former employer, the Miami Dolphins, the Denver Broncos, and the New York Giants. There is a lot to unpack with this. So, and he's he's he's, he's filing a suit against them for racial discrimination in, in regards to the head coach hiring process. And so thus far, we've had, I believe, four head coaches hired, I think. Uh, Matt Eberflus, Nathaniel Hackett, uh, 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 Brian Dable, and then I think uh, uh, another guy, I forgot his name, is about to get the job in, in Minnesota. So thus far, out of like eight openings, we've had four or five head coaches hired, and uh, none of them have been minorities. And of course, the Rooney Rule has come into question. I've said on the show, the intentions of the Rooney Rule are, are good. They're, they're in good faith. They're good-spirited by the late, great uh, uh, Dan Rooney. But it doesn't work. I saw a stat the other day that, and I'll get into the Flores thing in just a second, but I just want to throw this out there. Since the Rooney Rule came into play, and for those of you who don't know, by the way, the Rooney Rule is that you have to interview at least one minority candidate when you're looking for a coach. Like, that's that's the Rooney Rule. And so, since it came into effect in 2003, 129 head coaches have been hired since. 15 have been African American. 12%. Like, it, it just doesn't work. And by the way, I've had my issues with the commissioner of the NFL, Roger Goodell. This isn't a Roger Goodell problem. Okay, you know, a lot of people got mad when, when Colin Kaepernick was a free agent. Like, Roger Goodell, you know, you know, make uh, th- these. And Goodell probably could have done a better job conveying the message on Kaepernick and everything. But, you know, Goodell, you know, make these owners sign Kaepernick. He can't do that. Like, he, he, he can't tell an owner to sign Colin Kaepernick. He can't tell an owner to sign, or I'm sorry, to hire a black head coach. <coughs> Excuse me, that's, that's not within his power. And by the way, you look at the NFL office, the NFL front offices, it's incredibly diverse. There's white people, there's black people, there's women. It's people of all different back, backgrounds. You got Troy Vincent, who I believe is the vice president. So you've got a number of people in the NFL offices that are all from different backgrounds. So when you look at the owners in the NFL, the issue is them. They're the problems. They're not getting giving the right guys opportunities, which I'll get to throughout this topic. But let's talk, let's talk about Brian Flores. So he's 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 sued three teams. So let's start first with uh with the Miami Dolphins, the, his 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 former team. And this this one man could be oh lord what could come out of this. Okay, so it's by the way it's a 50 58 page lawsuit filed in Manhattan on Tuesday. And he claimed that in in that lawsuit, he claimed that Dolphins owner Stephen Ross offered him 100k $100,000 for every loss that occurred during the 2019 NFL season. 2019 was Brian Flores' first season as the Dolphins head coach. And the owner, Stephen Ross, according to Flores, said, hey, I'll pay you for a, I'll pay $100,000 for every game that we lose. So he is telling the coach, lose. Coach to lose. Which, what's what's the old saying? Organizations tank. Players and coaches don't. Coaches like, I gotta keep my job. I don't want to town. I don't intentionally lose. What are you talking about? Players like, I, I got a family to feed. I, I'm not gonna intentionally drop passes or throw interceptions or miss tackles. I'm not gonna do that. Stephen Ross apparently didn't get that message, according to Coach Flores. So if this ends up being true, oh my goodness. 
Stephen Ross should be removed from the National Football League in terms of owning an NFL franchise. That simple. Because if it if it comes out, by the way, Hugh Jackson, former NFL coach, coached with the Cleveland Browns from 2016 to 2018 when he was fired midseason. Hugh Jackson came out and said, Coach, Coach Flores, Browns also paid me to lose games. And so there could be a real issue here in regards to the owners and whether they they um, they paid the coaches or offered to pay the coaches for throwing games, basically, for throwing games, which is an insult to the integrity of competition. And that's what it is. And so you have that in Miami. Then you have in Denver. So Brian Flores is uh, uh, trying to become a head coach in the 2019 NFL hiring cycle earlier in that calendar year, 2019. And he interviews with the Denver Broncos. And according to Flores, again, these are allegations, so you know that that's what they are. Brian Flores alleges that the Broncos showed up an hour late to the interview looking disheveled, maybe a bit drunk. And so he's saying, yeah, they weren't, they weren't ready. Like they didn't treat me in a professional manner. I'm here to get a job and they're don't know what they're doing. And then the one that to me, to me is the most obvious. Like this one, I'd be like, what is there to investigate? He's got like actual evidence of this one, like full right there evidence. A text exchange with Bill Belichick. So, Bill Belichick texted Brian Flores, quote, Sounds like you have landed. Congrats. Flores responded, Did you hear something I didn't? Belichick responded, Giants? Flores, I interview on Thursday. I think I have a shot at it. Belichick, got it. I hear from Buffalo and NYJ, or I'm sorry, NYG, that you are their guy. Hope it works out if you want it to. Flores, that's definitely what I want. I hope you're right, coach. Thank you. He then sent another text. Coach Flores sent another text to Bill Belichick. Coach, are you talking to Brian Flores or Brian Dable? Just making sure. This is where it gets real interesting. Belichick responded. Sorry, I effed this up. I double-checked and misread the text naming Dable. Sorry about that. BB, Bill Belichick. And Brian Flores responded, thanks, Bill. So, first of all, Bill Belichick's not good at texting. <laughs> I mean, that, that is, uh, the, the, Belichick's not good at texting, which, you know, uh, you, you don't look at me, you're like, you know, tech savvy. No offense, but you, you don't think that with Bill Belichick. But in, in, in all seriousness. So, basically... The New York football giants who, may I remind you, in their nearly 100-year history, have never hired an African-American head coach. Never. They had already predetermined, at least according to these text messages, that's that's about as, yeah, that's, that's pretty good evidence, right? They predetermined, Dable's our guy. By the way, I have nothing against Dable. Right, because you know Dable comes from the Belichick coaching tree. I've I've said for a year, Brian Dable needs to be a head coach in the NFL. Nothing against him. This is not an attack on Brian Dable in the slightest. Okay, I think he's going to do a solid job with the Giants. But on the Giants side of it, the Tish family, the Mara family, who owns the team, who owns the organization, Brian Flores was y'all's. Rooney Rule interview. You brought him there because the rules state you have to. Not because... Let's give him a shot. Let's see. Let's see, let's see, let's see what he's got. Maybe, maybe he can be our next head coach. I mean, we have been garbage for five years. Worst record, by the way. You know what the New York Giants are since 2017? They got the worst record in football. Since 2017, they got the worst record in football. By the way, in that stretch... At no point in any of the last five seasons had the New York football Giants had a winning record. But they're not even going to give Brian Dable a shot because they've already predetermined who their guy is. 
Brian Flores, who, as I detailed a few weeks ago when he was fired, and I was about as outraged as I'm sure many of you were when he was fired, as I came out in the show and said, three seasons in Miami, he had uh, three quarterbacks that started games for him. Three quarterbacks who started a grand total of 49 games. The quarterbacks' names are Ryan Fitzpatrick, who's played on like 20 teams. Not exactly that many, but he's playing a lot of teams. Jacoby Brissett, who's a career backup. And Tua Tagovailoa, who, let's face it, is a bust. He's not in the same galaxy as Justin Herbert or Joe Burrow. Brian Flores started 0-7 his first year with the Dolphins, and they got just crushed in a lot of those games. And then they started to pick up some momentum. As a matter of fact, the last game of the Dolphins' season that year, they beat Tom Brady and the Patriots, Tom Brady and Bill Belichick and the Patriots, and guess what? Knocked the Patriots out of a first-round bye, and the Patriots ended up, as I mentioned with the Brady topic earlier, losing to the Tennessee Titans in the first round. So the Dolphins finished 5-11, but they got momentum at the end of the season. They got something they could build off of, right? They're a rebuilding franchise. You need to take something good into the following season. 2020, with, again, Ryan Fitzpatrick and Tua Tagovailoa. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. One guy starting, then Tua comes in, and then he's getting benched for Fitzpatrick, but Tua's still starting. Then Fitzpatrick starts, and then Fitzpatrick gets hurt, and Tua's starting. And Brian Flores won double-digit games. He went 10-6. and six. And almost made the playoffs with that at quarterback. May I remind everybody out there that one of these Super Bowl head coaches, Zach Taylor, you know what his record was going into this season? His head coaching record? One of those seasons, by the way, with Joe Burrow. 6-25-1. and one. Six wins, 25 losses, one tie. 2021 rolls around. The Dolphins got off to a pretty bad start, 1-7. and seven. But guess what? They won eight of their last nine games. Thanks so much for watching the show on YouTube. Be sure to click that big red subscribe button and go check out the other clips and full shows of Carving It Up Live. Have a blessed day.